Now that I got my braces off, I find myself smiling all the time. Openly smiling. A big reason for that is not me not having braces anymore or anything like that. I mean, of course, it plays a part. But I find myself in a ton of new situations where I'm surrounded by people who don't know me at work or in a dog park. A lot of social situations where people just don't know me. I feel like just openly smiling in all of these situations will make a good impression. It will create a positive association with me as a stranger. And of course it makes sense and all, but I don't think I ever did it. I don't think, I, I feel like maybe I was just a bit too self-conscious to be doing that in the past. Or I don't know. Now all I do is smile openly. Well, obviously what helps that I'm here is I just know that everything that could have been done through my jaws and my teeth has been done. And this is now my final version of the face. I have to leave it and I'm cool with that go with that and I'm like yay let's just fucking smile I don't know if that makes any sense but I, I truly am smiling a ton these days and I'm like yeah this is me smiling and I want people to remember that version of me especially when it's a new situation and it, it just opens up a lot more doors I believe I'm glad that I reached a stage where I'm like a smile even if it's like a crooked smile or like an off smile beats a serious face in any situation. Next week will mark two months of us having our peen, so he'll be four months old. And it's funny to look back at things that I thought would be the most stressful. Stuff like, I don't know, I feel like the most stressful part for me was training to go potty indoors and outdoors. What else did I think would be the most stressful? I think that was for some reason the biggest concern. <laughs> and the reality turned out to be totally different. There's been so many things I never thought would be the hardest, such as getting my partner on board that both of us need to be looking after the puppy because it's hard and, I, and there's no way I can be dragging all of this by myself, especially when I just got the new job, like literally at the same time. Him stepping up to the task was a big thing that made it all easier and more manageable. Then. I didn't expect how much my life would really transform. Of course, I knew that I would be needing to wake up early and whatnot. But there's so much depth to my life now compared to where it used to be. It's a positive thing, of course. I didn't realize, I didn't expect it, and I'm grateful for it. Is that time of the year? No, no. <laughs> there was the hands again. And the first one on the list is get food. It's not so bad. Oh, good job. I'm waiting for the mile. It's very nice one. Look, who came to help? Mia? Yeah. Oh, you're going to go down. You're going to sit? Oh, careful. Good job. He did now. He's just so accepting all the hate. What did that person get? No, it has been like this. Ah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, about the bath shoes, Marcus. We're getting all the balls in here. I'm such an idiot. I thought that today would be the day when they would be doing the corporate headshots kind of thing. I don't know. So I woke up early, got all dressed up, took makeup with me, did my hair really nicely, did my makeup, like made an effort. <laughs> and then um, I wore a dress and tights and when i was school treating to work it was extremely cold so i'm like fuck i'm so cold i'm gonna get sick you know but then i was like but it's worth it because it's a corporate picture day well guess what i fucked up <laughs> ah it's actually walking to work is such a drag honestly once you've experienced the taste of driving a scooter or driving a car or like a bike anything that excites you walking it's tough it's not just tough it's just boring it's like not excited at all it's an absolute drag for me the reason why i'm not <laughs> driving the scooter today is because there's a drinks party my old office drinks party i'll be going there with rp so i won't be able to manage a scooter and rp at the same time it's just impossible <laughs> i'm going to work now and then my partner will join me uh, with RP and then we'll figure it out but yeah gosh walking it's just not it's just boring it's boring I had a really interesting conversation at work today where I basically had to say had to push back a little bit 
um, and establish boundaries <laughs> if you will. And I'm lucky that my management is very chill, like so chill that I feel like it's going to be a little bit easier to, to work compared to like previous instances where conversations like this would have gone yeah. entirely different way. I was just happy, I felt like I was hurt, I felt like arrangements would be made to suit my needs and I'm happy about that. <laughs> anyway, I'm in Central right now, stood on the balcony, waiting for my boyfriend to come to Central with our pink so that we could go to this drinks party together. I'm hoping that he's handling our pin okay. I feel like it's the first time he's actually walking him by himself. Usually it's me or I'm there with him. Now it's just him. So I'm hoping he's doing fine. I'm, I have a good feeling about the whole thing. But I do need to kill a bit of time here. So I'm just taking my time, walking slowly to the station, but like taking a tube. While I'm waiting for my boyfriend at RP, I'd like to say a few words about this retainer. So I'm at a point where I've been wearing it for the last three weeks, I think. And I got so used to wearing it that whenever I take it off, it just feels off. It doesn't feel like I don't, it feels everything starts to shift very fast also it feels like my butt has moved and changed and now it's I don't know it's uncomfortable not to have the retainer on with the retainer on everything just matches perfectly I don't know how to describe this feeling but it feels good to wear the retainer I mean obviously my speech is a little off but now that I got used to wearing it it's better than without the retainer so it's a little strange I'm a little worried about it because I remember the feeling where like my braces come off and everything was just perfectly matching and it, it felt so good and now whenever I take it off everything feels off and at this point you won't be able to change it you won't be able to like tell your fiance something is off and like adjust it because there's nothing to adjust the braces are off like that's it I have an appointment with my dentist to get crowns and veneers on the 14th of June few weeks time so that will be the point where they'll actually be fitting fixed retainers so whatever I have right now is forever and I'm not sure how to feel about it because it's not it just doesn't seem ideal at the same time I did speak to my colleague she's wearing Invisalign and she's experiencing something similar she feels like whenever the retainer is on it feels perfect and when she takes it off like teeth are it's just a weird feeling i feel like it's just a matter of getting used to i hope it's just that i hope that my teeth didn't shift back to where they used to be ah, maybe i'm just a little bit paranoid about it i don't know but i'm wearing the china 24 7 as prescribed <laughs> by the nurse i know that some people don't do that and i feel i would just be too scared to skip a day you know because you feel everything shifts and the second you take it off it's just it's not solid you know <laughs> i don't know how best to describe it it's just not solid well that's why they say you have to wear it 24 7 for the first year so i'm expecting next year around this time the situation to change oh yeah i never updated you on the indian food situation so i ate with my retainers on i feel like because i chose the rice and the, I wasn't even eating the curry the type of meat I was eating wasn't too spiced up I don't think so it wasn't staining anything it didn't stain the retainer it didn't stain my teeth so everything is good on that front I never realized how much more interesting it is to edit videos that you filmed the footage for a long time ago and by a long time ago I mean I don't know three four weeks before the day when you're editing for example now that I only have so much time to edit things I do have a ton of footage I do release vlogs on a weekly basis that was my plan I'm following through with it but I also am filming a ton and I end up having so much footage that it just gets added 
to the folder and now I'm editing this video that I'll be releasing tomorrow and the footage room is like it feels like it's from a different life oh my gosh only yesterday I was saying hey look at me I'm so good at wearing my retainer I would never not wear it bloody blah, blah blah and I just went to walk our pain and I forgot to put it back on. I was having breakfast and he was being naughty. I was like, fuck it, let's, let's just walk him. And I just come out of the house. I'm like, I forgot to reach here. Too late to come back. I mean, it's not too late. It's just a mission. I'm like, okay. Ooh, look at it, you. <gasps> Such a beauty. What's your name? Remember I told you recently that I do feel that my teeth are losing the width. My teeth are going back, and what I mean by that is that one of the things that we did orthodontically was expanding my upper palate so there's a little bit more volume there. And now that I close teeth together, just too tight, it feels like I have to like force my top to over the bottom or top teeth over the bottom teeth, and it's uncomfortable. It feels like I'm making it happen, whereas before it was naturally sitting, and it's frustrating. I'm like what can be done at this stage there's nothing can be done right there's nothing i really need to look into this it feels like it's a major step back and they say that a few millimeters of movement back is to be expected with anything like jaw surgery or orthodontics but i don't know it feels like a bit too much and i wonder was it caused by me not having the retainer right after or what and then again I do have my retainer now, so what's the problem? Everything fits perfectly. I, I can put my retainer on, no problem. So it shouldn't be an issue, in my opinion. But it is. Oh man, so I'm going home but it's raining like crazy. It wasn't raining before and now it's like raining and I'm like, I'm soaked. Oh, I don't know what to do. I'm actually on the other side of the train station if I was to take a train. But I'm like, look, I'm halfway, am I halfway through? I don't even know. Should I go? Should I wait? Like, I'm soaked. I'm like... <laughs> I have really good news. I decided that it's finally time for me to go to a warm country and enjoy myself for a little bit by the seaside and all. And I booked a holiday to go to Spain with my boyfriend. It's so exciting to me. It's going to be action packed. I planned half of the stuff already. There'll be snorkeling, there'll be kayaking. We're going to go see this really awesome cave formation that's been there for there's this really awesome hiking trail as well across the mountains and all I'm just so excited about it but per usual there's a fucking problem I just don't get it it's, why can't life be easy right so I basically need to get a visa to travel to Europe and because Spain will be the country of destination I need to go to a Sp Spanish embassy consulate whatever place where you go to get visa so there's a site form that you need to form out, uh, fill out and I've done that I filled out all of the forms spend an hour filling everything out and then I get to a point where I need to book an appointment to go there with my documents to get visa well apply officially and I get to that part and I see that all of the appointments have been booked up all the way until August August my holiday has been booked for July beginning of July and by default <laughs> I start to freak out I'm like what the fuck how do I do what do I do what do I do what do I do you know went on reddit everyone keeps saying look if you can avoid getting Schengen visa to Spain get a Schengen visa via a different country but then you would have to travel to that country first before going anywhere else within the zone and I'm not going to cancel my trip because of that. I'm not going to like cancel my flight booking and Airbnb booking and I needed those for me to get visa so see it gets a little bit complicated so I'm like panicking on reddit people say look it's awful if you go on google reviews you'll see that it's like two stars and everyone is complaining how unprofessional rude it's awful the processes the site never works um, 
there's a ton of shit that's happening and it doesn't give me confidence that it's going to be a good experience and I'm leaving it right now I'm like fuck I can't book an appointment for me to apply for visa so like fuck it I'm just gonna go there went to that place yesterday <laughs> I'm aligned to speak to somebody and when it's my turn to talk. I'm like, hi, I booked a holiday for July, was on site, blah, blah, blah. Got to a point where I need to book an appointment and none of them are available. What do I do? And the lady looks at me like that, saying, I don't know, literally that. I'm like, blank face. I, I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> She's like, well, if you want, you can go to speak to someone at number eight. Go to number eight. Wait in a queue in the situation saying like, hey, what do I do? It's like, I don't know, go speak to a manager. I should you not, this is the only place in London where you can get visa to go to Spain. And I'm like so frustrated, losing my absolute everything, losing my... <sighs> and she's like, yeah, go speak to a manager. She's like an Indian lady, small Indian lady running around, she won't miss her. I'm like, what the fuck? Find the manager speak to her and she's like oh don't worry like all you need to do is just refresh the page to refresh the page and they will show up like you'll you'll get the appointment it's just super chill relax and it's like oh well also your appointment is in july so you have plenty of time don't worry though that didn't give me confidence i'm like you know what maybe i should relax maybe i should relax maybe i should keep refreshing the page every hour and i am doing that and she's like oh yeah you know it's summertime everyone's holiday everyone's applying they will be adding more appointments in in about a week so just keep refreshing the page everything's gonna be great and she said in a week's time if you don't get an appointment just come in maybe there'll be like a premium appointment service and i'm like premium appointments cost an extra hundred pounds like there's no way this visa cost is like what or I don't even know, 60 quid. I don't feel like I should be paying for a premium service when I'm booking my holiday in advance. It's not like I need a visa today or tomorrow. I need it by one month and one week time. I don't feel I should be paying for premium because they don't have available. Like what on actual earth is happening? So frustrating. I'm, I don't want to panic, but I am panicking. Um, I guess all I can do is just refresh the page, wait for the appointment, I don't know. So there was a bit of an office party happening and I had a cider, so I'm a little bit tipsy but not too much. And I need to scoot at home, so wish me luck. <laughs> By the way, yesterday, the film yesterday, I don't know, you remember that time when I happened in the rain? <sighs> Never again, it was awful, I sucked through. It was bad. Never again. Never again. Thank God my scooter is still working. I spoke to one of my colleagues yesterday and they said that they had exactly the same issue with BLS Spain and that's the place where you get visa to Spain, Schengen visa. All the appointments are booked up and literally there's nothing you can do aside from refreshing the page every hour. Now, how ridiculous is that? I just, I'm disgusted by this. It's absolutely insane. It's 2022, it's London. And you can't get visa to Spain, like what the fuck? I would consider this level of service to be a norm in like, I don't know, Eastern European country I'm from. Not in London, not for Spain. She basically told me not to worry. Uh, she said, just keep refreshing the page every hour. Ask your boyfriend to do that as well, just in case. Prepare all the documents in advance so that when the appointment is available, you have everything ready and then she said, just go there a few times and just push for it. And you know what? Those appointments are 15 minutes long. You come in, give your documents, and that's it. I mean, they take your fingerprints, but if you've given your fingerprints for Schengen visa, over the last couple of years, you don't even have to do that because they have your details on the system. It's... I just, I can't comprehend it. And you know, with this situation, my mind goes to all, all of the dark places. Like, should I cancel 
my flight tickets and Airbnb now that I still have time to do that. Should I cancel all of that? Can I even cancel all of that? Should I buy tickets to a neighboring country like France where you can get visa no problem? That's what people recommend doing. Another thing <laughs> they say is that you can basically and I think it's dodgy and I'm not comfortable with that but you go on booking.com you get refundable flights refundable accommodation to a country where there's no problems getting visa for like France or I don't know any other country that I don't even know which ones are okay like Denmark you know Iceland they're very good so you get Schengen and then you basically fly to the country of your destination which is different for, and it's not it's not the rule. I mean, a lot of people do that, but you're supposed to get Schengen visa to the first country that you're entering, and then you can travel around Schengen zone. In my case, it's Spain, so it has to be from the Spanish um, embassy. And people do that for other countries. Like, what are you doing, Arpin? Come out! Oh no, no, no! Arpin, let's go to the park. Let's go to the park then. Oh, you're stuck. You got it. You got it. Good boy. Good job. Okay. Good job. Okay. Are we ready to go? You want to go? Oh, look at this. <gasps> Your bum is so dirty now. Anyway, um, people do that and apparently it's like they get away with it. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be stressing over that. It's just, you know, it's not. <laughs> They're going to just say, look, that's like you just gotta turn you around they can turn you around to the apple say look that's you can't do that it's against the rules and i'm thinking oh, should i refund the tickets should i rethink the journey should i redo everything like what do i do mm -hmm.